This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. This is Professor Russell James at Texas Tech University. Welcome to Charitable Remainder Trusts Part 3, Calculating Deductions. As with charitable gift annuities, the taxation rules for charitable remainder trusts can become complex. This is due to the multifaceted tax dimensions of a charitable remainder trust transaction. The charitable remainder trust creates an immediate charitable income tax deduction as well as a stream of payments that can be treated as ordinary income, capital gain, and or return of principal. With the exception of the valuation process for a fixed annuity, the tax treatment of a charitable remainder trust is different than for an otherwise similar charitable gift annuity. The charitable gift annuity rules will not apply to payments received from the charitable remainder trust. Just as with any bargain sale or quid pro quo transaction, the charitable deduction is simply the value of what the donor gave less the value of what the donor received back. In this case, what the donor receives back are the payments from the charitable remainder trust. This is still the process for valuing the gift, even if the donor chooses to have the payments made to someone else. Consider a simple example using numbers identical to the charitable gift annuity example from that lecture of a donor who gives $100,000 of cash to his charitable remainder trust and in exchange receives the right to collect $4,000 per year for life from the trust. Just as with a charitable gift annuity, the charitable income tax deduction is the amount gifted less the value of the annuity payments. In this case, the fixed annuity amount is $4,000 per year. However, the same concept applies if the donor were receiving a fixed percentage payment of, say, 5% of trust assets per year. The charitable income tax deduction is still the difference between what the donor gave and the value of what the donor received back. The only difference between the charitable remainder annuity trust and the charitable remainder unit trust is the calculation process for valuing the payments. So, how do we value the payments that are scheduled to come from the charitable remainder trust? Naturally, we do not know in advance how long the annuitant might live, nor do we know what the future returns of the charitable remainder trust will be. But we cannot wait until after the death of the donor or some fixed period of years before we calculate the value of the charitable income tax deduction. Consequently, the value of the payments are based upon the premise that the annuitant will live to his or her life expectancy as of the date of transfer and that the investments in the charitable remainder trust will always return exactly the Section 7520 interest rate as of the date of the initial transfer. Of course, if the annuitant lives longer or shorter than expected, or the investment returns differ from the initial Section 7520 interest rate, the actual payments to the annuitant may vary widely. The ultimate reality does not affect the valuation of the payments for purposes of the charitable income tax deduction. The process of valuing payments from a charitable remainder annuity trust is identical to the process for valuing payments from a charitable gift annuity. The first step is to find the Section 7520 rate, which is available at the IRS website and at a variety of other plan giving websites. With this rate, the one life or two life annuity tables can be used to identify the appropriate annuity factor. Tables are located at the IRS website. Multiplying this annuity factor times the payment with a possible adjustment from table K for payments starting earlier than uh, or given more frequently than 12 months gives the valuation of the annuity for purposes of the charitable income tax deduction. As with charitable gift annuities, the donor is allowed to choose the current section 7520 rate or either of the previous two months for the annuity calculation. Additionally, because the next month's section 7520 rate is released towards the end of the previous month, the donor may have a choice among four different rates if the transaction can be briefly postponed. 
In our example of a charitable remainder annuity trust, where the age 55 donor contributes $100,000 and receives a $4,000 per year annuity on January 31st of 2015, the available rates were 2.0% or 2.2%. On that date, the donor would also have known of the upcoming Section 7520 rate for February and could have postponed the transaction if that rate had been more advantageous. In either case, the donor in this example has the choice of using 2.0% or 2.2% as the Section 7520 rate. Which one is preferable? The theory is the same as that used with charitable gift annuities. As interest rates increase, the value of a fixed dollar annuity decreases. Because the charitable tax deduction is the difference between the in this case, $100,000 transfer amount, and the value of the fixed dollar annuity, the donor will want the highest interest rate as this produces the lowest calculated value for the annuity. In this case, the donor is benefited by choosing the highest interest rate available, which is the 2.2% Section 7520 rate from January. This higher rate results in a relatively lower valuation of the annuity payment stream and consequently a relatively higher valuation of the charitable income tax deduction. Although the higher interest rate results in a larger charitable income tax deduction, it also results in a lower total investment portion, which will be counted as tax-free return of capital when returned. In cases where the charitable tax deduction could not be fully used, this could lead to a circumstance where the lower rate would be preferred. Such a scenario is much less likely with charitable remainder trusts than with charitable gift annuities. A charitable gift annuity donor who lives to his or her life expectancy will receive all of his or her investment back as tax-free portions of the annual payments. In contrast, the tax characterization for payments to a charitable remainder trust donor is quite different. It's quite possible for a donor not to receive any of his or her investment back as tax-free repayment of principal in a charitable remainder trust, which makes this strategy far less attractive for charitable remainder trusts than for charitable gift annuities. The rules for counting payments as return of investment will be discussed in more detail in a subsequent lecture. Once this Section 7520 rate has been selected, we can now move to the appropriate section of the Single Life Table S. Once we are in the section of the Single Life Table S for a 2.2% interest rate, we see that the annuity factor for an age 55 donor is 18.6808. Multiplying this annuity factor times the $4,000 per year annuity payment gives the valuation for the annuity payment of $74,723.20. If this annuity payment were to be made annually on the anniversary of the initial transfer, the $74,723.20 valuation would be correct. If the annuity made its first payment prior to the anniversary of the initial transfer or made payments more frequently than annually, the valuation would have to be increased by an adjustment factor taken from Table K from the same website. In that case, the annuity would be worth less if the annuitant would receive the payments later or more if the annuitant would receive the payments earlier because payments received earlier could presumably be invested to earn additional interest. Just as with a charitable gift annuity, the calculation of the charitable income tax deduction is simply the amount of the transfer, $100,000, less the value of the annuity, $74,723.20, for a total deduction of $25,276.80. Now, suppose the donor is receiving not a fixed dollar payment, but rather receiving 5% of all assets inside the charitable remainder trust as of the anniversary date of the initial transfer. This is a unitrust, not an annuity trust. The process for calculating the charitable income tax deduction resulting from a transfer to a charitable remainder unit trust differs slightly from the calculation for a charitable remainder annuity trust. This concept, however, is identical in that the deductible gift is the difference between the transfer and the value of the payment stream promised to the annuitant.
there are actually fewer steps for calculating the charitable deduction for a charitable remainder unit trust than for a charitable remainder annuity trust. To calculate the deduction for the age 55 donor receiving a 5% payout rate, simply multiply the initial transfer amount by the remainder percentage found in Table U at the same website. This remainder interest is 0.31450, which, when multiplied by the $100,000 initial transfer, results in a charitable deduction of $31,450. Notice that we did not use the Section 7520 interest rate in the calculation of the charitable income tax deduction for a charitable remainder unit trust. How is this possible? As interest rates rise, the amount remaining at the expiration of the annuitant's initial life expectancy would also rise. But the present value discounting of that larger future value also increases due to the higher interest rate. And this difference exactly offsets the increased remainder amount in present value terms. Let's look at an example. Suppose an annuitant had a 20-year life expectancy and received 5% of the value of the trust at the end of each year. If we were using a 0% interest rate, then the amount remaining in 20 years would be $35,849. Because the interest rate was 0%, the present value of the amount would be $35,849. If instead we used a 10% interest rate, the amount remaining in 20 years would be a much larger $241,171. But the present value of $241,171 received in 20 years using a 10% interest rate, it's the same $35,849. Because the charitable income tax deduction is based on the present value of the predicted transfer to charity, changes in the interest rate have no effect on this deduction. The standard calculations for valuing the tax deductions for gifts to a charitable remainder unit trust are based on the assumption that payments to the annuitant will be made immediately each year after the annual valuation. When the payments are postponed, uh, for example, by being paid out monthly over the course of the following year, the annuitant receives a reduced benefit. For annuity trusts and charitable gift annuities, the valuation of this change in benefit due to intra-year timing of the distribution is calculated using Table K. For unit trusts, this adjustment is made using Table F, linked at the same website, which generates an adjusted payout rate. For example, a 6% payout rate, if paid quarterly, beginning with the first payment immediately after the annual valuation, when the Section 7520 rate is 2.4%, generates an adjusted payout rate of 6% times 0.991168, or 5.947008%. This creates a problem because Table U contains remainder factors for 6% and 5.8%, but not for 5.94. 7008%. Calculating the remainder factor, in other words, the charitable tax deduction, requires interpolating between the factor for 6% and the factor for 5.8%. The formula for this interpolation, where APR is the adjusted payout rate, is the factor above APR minus the sum of the factor below APR minus the factor above APR all of that multiplied by the APR minus the rate below the APR divided by 0 0.002. Uh, so if the annuitant were age 55 in the previous example, uh, then the present value of the charitable remainder interest would be 0 0.26039. As expected, this remainder interest factor, 0 0.26039, for that 5.94708% rate is between the factor for the 6% rate which was the 0.25768, and the factor for the 5.8% rate, 
which is the 2.6791. A contribution to a charitable remainder trust is required to have a minimum of 10% of the present value projected to go to charity at the termination of the trust. This requires that an amount significantly larger than 10% of the original amount must be projected to go to charity at termination because the charity is required to wait a substantial amount of time before receiving any funds. In other words, in order to generate a present value of 10%, the future value projected to go to the charity will necessarily be larger. Because the charitable income tax deduction resulting from a transfer to a charitable remainder trust is the present value of the amount projected to go to charity when the transfer is valued at fair market value, this means that the charitable income tax deduction for a transfer to charity must be at least 10%. If the amount projected to go to charity has a present value of less than 10% when the transfer is valued at fair market value, the trust will not qualify as a charitable remainder trust. This means that there will be no deductible gift. The general rule is that gifts where the donor keeps a retained interest of a different type than that given to the charity are not deductible. The charitable remainder trust is an exception to this rule, but if a trust no longer qualifies as a charitable remainder trust, then this exception doesn't apply and the gift is not deductible. Additionally, because the trust will no longer qualify as a charitable trust, it will be required to pay taxes on any realized capital gains or income resulting from trust investments. In practice, such trusts can include language permitting the trustee to amend the trust, for example, increasing the charitable share for purposes of guaranteeing that the charitable remainder trust rules are met. Thus, it is essential that the trust is projected to give a large enough amount to charity that would generate at least a 10% tax deduction were the transfer to be valued at fair market value. It is important to note that all of these calculations are based upon the projected amount going to charity. The amount that is actually transferred to charity is irrelevant to the tax calculation. This amount can be greater or less depending upon the return on the underlying investments and in cases where the trust payments continue for a life or lives, the longevity of the annuitant. The amount projected to go to charity and thus the tax deduction based on the present value of that amount depend upon the longevity of the annuitant who is typically the donor. The longer an annuitant lives, the longer a charity will have to wait to receive any funds. To the extent that the annual payments to annuitants exceed the earnings of the trust, greater longevity will also result in a smaller nominal amount being left to charity. In the case of a charitable remainder annuity trust, it is possible for the trust to completely exhaust, leaving no money for the charity because the payments remain the same regardless of the funds remaining in the trust. Total exhaustion of a unit trust is less likely because payments become smaller as the trust amounts become less. The calculation used by the IRS to project the life expectancy of the annuitant systematically under projects typical donor annuitant life expectancy. Consequently, the tax deduction generated from transfers to charitable remainder trusts is actuarially much larger than it should be. The source of this misprojection is that the IRS calculations are based upon normal life expectancy for a typical person of the annuitant's age. However, donor annuitants on average live much longer than typical people of their same age. This is due to three reasons. First, annuitants self-select for health. In other words, people who know they have a substantially greater risk of death generally don't purchase annuities. Clearly, it makes no financial sense for a person with a known terminal illness to purchase a lifetime stream of payments. Because this, quote, sick group is largely excluded, the resulting life expectancy of annuity purchasers is, on average, longer. Unlike the IRS, commercial annuity companies use a special life expectancy table when pricing commercial annuities that reflects this selection bias. Additionally, those who establish charitable remainder trusts are typically quite wealthy. 
On average, wealthy people live longer than others of their same age. This may be due to factors such as access to medical care and health-promoting environments that money can purchase, as well as physical and mental capabilities that help to both generate wealth and result in longer life. Finally, Recent evidence suggests that those with charitable bequest plans live even longer than those of their same wealth decile. See the publication American Charitable Bequest Demographics. Charitable remainder trusts typically make a transfer of the donor's assets at the death of the donor, making them a form of general charitable bequest planning. The reason for this additional longevity among those with a charitable bequest plan has not been identified, but may relate to the importance of purpose and social connectedness in both giving and longevity. The net result of this combination of factors is that the donor annuitants will live, on average, much longer than IRS projections. Consequently, donors will receive a larger tax deduction than might be justified by reality. One potential indicator of this reality is that the share of charitable remainder trust assets actually distributed to charity is quite small. In 2011, for example, charitable remainder trusts held over $99 billion in assets but made charitable distributions of only $1.9 billion, or less than 2%. Arguably, this may be a, quote, temporary experience due to the relatively recent establishment of some charitable remainder trusts. However, given that such trusts were authorized in the tax code of 1969, to have such a small portion of assets going to charity some 42 years later suggests the potential for additional causes of this result, such as actuarially inappropriate valuations. Both the Charitable Remainder Unit Trust and the Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust are required to project an amount with a present value of at least 10% of the initial transfer going to the charity at termination. However, the Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust has a potential additional requirement. Unlike a Charitable Remainder Unit Trust, as the assets in a Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust grow smaller and smaller, the payment remains at its original dollar level. Because the payments do not become smaller as the assets in the Charitable Remainder Trust become smaller, there is a greater risk of total exhaustion of all of the funds in the Charitable Remainder Trust, especially where the annuitant lives much longer than expected. In the event of exhaustion, the donor would have enjoyed dramatic tax benefits with no actual charitable transfers ever taking place. This is a very bad result from the perspective of the goals of tax policy. To provide some protection against this disturbing outcome, a charitable remainder annuity trust will be disqualified if there is greater than a 5% chance of exhaustion due to the annuitant longevity unless it uses the alternative safe harbor language provided by the IRS in 2016. Determining if there is a greater than 5% chance of exhaustion first requires a standard time value of money calculation to determine at what age the charitable remainder annuity trust would exhaust. Using a standard financial calculator, this is done by solving for N, the number of time periods, after entering the interest rate, the initial section 7520 rate, present value, the initial transfer amount, payments per time period, that is the charitable remainder annuity payment, and a future value of zero, which is the point of exhaustion. This amount of time, or in time periods, is added to the annuitant's current age to identify the age at which the charitable remainder annuity trust would exhaust. Next, to determine if there is a greater than 5% chance that the annuitant will live to that age, divide the number of people alive at the annuitant's projected age of exhaustion by the number of people alive at the annuitant's current age, according to IRS Table 2000 CM. If this ratio is greater than 0.05, the trust does not pass the test. For such trust, there is now an alternative solution. The trust will not be disqualified if it requires termination and transfer of all remaining assets to charity whenever those assets fall to an amount that would have had a present value of 10% or less of the initial contribution using the initial Section 7520 interest rate. In other words, if the trust ever falls to an amount 
that would have had an initial present value of 10% or less at the time of the initial contribution, it must immediately distribute everything to charity. This alternative is particularly important during low interest rate environments when it might otherwise be impossible to avoid the 5% exhaustion disqualification for all but the oldest donors. A trust intended to be a charitable remainder trust can be disqualified for a number of reasons, such as being projected to leave too little to charity or having too great of a risk of exhaustion. But what happens if the trust fails to qualify as a charitable remainder trust under the tax code? A disqualified trust doesn't just disappear. Its failure to comply with the tax requirements for a charitable remainder trust typically won't change the fact that the trust was created under state law, is irrevocable, and may be holding the assets transferred by the donor. So what happens then? Although the trust continues to exist as an irrevocable trust, it does not qualify for treatment as a charitable remainder trust under federal tax law. Consequently, all of the charitable tax benefits are lost. The donor receives no tax deduction for transferring assets to the trust. Additionally, the trust itself is not a tax-exempt entity. Thus, whenever the trust sells an appreciated asset, the trust must pay capital gains taxes on that sale. This means that the donor loses the ability to defer recognition of capital gains taxes. Whenever the trust earns income of other types, it must also pay taxes on that income. This means that the trust can no longer grow assets in a tax-free environment. In fact, trusts are subject to a compressed tax rate schedule, meaning that trusts pay the highest marginal income tax rate. 39.6% at a much lower level of income. For example, that level of income was only $12,301 in 2015, as compared to what individual taxpayers pay. As a result, the disqualification of a charitable remainder trust would be a tax disaster for most donors. Because of this dramatically negative result, such trusts are typically drafted with language that allows the trustee to amend the terms of the otherwise irrevocable trust if such changes are required to allow the trust to qualify as a charitable remainder trust under federal tax law. This has been Charitable Remainder Trusts Part 3, Calculating Deductions. This is Professor Russell James at Texas Tech University. Join us for the next presentation, Charitable Remainder Trusts Part 4, Taxing Distributions.